I'm Richard Lobb, the principal developer of the Moodle CodeRunner plugin. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the authoring of a simple writer function question in C or C++. To do that, I'm here in the question bank of my favorite Moodle server, in this case CodeRunner.org.nz, and I'm going to first of all show you what it is that we're going to achieve. Here's a, an example, a C function. If I preview this, it says the question text is write a C function with this particular signature, int square of int n, that returns the square of its parameter n. There's a for example table showing you how the question is going to be tested, mainly by two simple tests here. There may be others, of course, but these are the two we're exposing to the student, and the expected result of that. So this test says print in uh, decimal integer format, the square of minus 11, and so on. When the student fills in the correct response, they don't have that button, I do, then, of course, when they check it, they see a few more tests. They see, uh, in this case, four, and there's a hidden test here, which I can see because I'm the question author. It's grayed out for me, and it's invisible to the student. Let's author a question like that. So go back into the question bank, Click the Create a New Question button, and we're going to create a code runner question. Add that. Now I have to pick my question type. If I'm writing a C, write a function question, then I choose C function. Otherwise, if it's C++, I use CPP. Let's start with C. I'm going to mostly skip over all these things. They are reasonable sort of defaults. The template parameters field is only needed if I have the option of setting parameters into my template, and I don't. So we'll just go straight to the uh, key stuff, the question name. Write a square function in C. I have to have some description here. Write a function, and I'm just going to leave that out for now. You can obviously fill that in in detail. I'm not going to do any general feedback. I'm going to enter an answer. So the answer I want the student to come up with is going to be int square of int n return n times n. There's the answer I want from the student. You should always choose validate and save. The only other thing I have to do is test it. So let's just have a couple of quick tests. Printf using a decimal format with a new line at the end. The result of evaluating the expression square of minus 11. And of course it should print 121. I'll have one other test. Uh, let's have a test that prints plus 5 squared, and that should come out to 25. And you should always have um, a few more tests than that. I'm going to click the use as example on that one, so that comes up in the, in the student's example table, and I might as well have another example. Now let's have a third test that we don't give to the student. Um, it's hard to imagine that they're going to pass those two and fail the third one, but students do some weird things sometimes. Let's print the square of 7, which should be 49. And we should always have a hidden test. The reason for having a hidden test is that some students will do code like if the test is this, print this, else if the test is this, print this. So you have to uh, defeat that sort of strategy by having a hidden case. So this one I'm going to set to hide, and this one is going to be the square of, let's make it a bigger number, 100 should be 10,000. 1,000, uh, four zeros, please, Richard, 10,000. Right, there's my question. That's done. Notice that I've ignored a large number of the fields. They're redundant for simple questions. Save the changes. If I had made a mistake, it wouldn't validate and it would bounce back at me. Let's just see what happened. This was the write a square function in C that I just wrote. If I preview it, I get uh, a rather excessively large space to work in. I can fill in the correct response to work, check that it works, and I can click check. It worked. So, so far, so good. Let's just quickly look under the hood to see what's going on here, though. So if I close that and go back into edit mode here, I'm going to click this customize button. Now, the customize button is what I use if I have tricky stuff that isn't accommodated by the normal question types. Here I'm going to use it, though, to show you what is going on. So when I click customize, I see what's called the template. This is it here. This is very important. So the template here consists of a heap of hash includes, 
a separator which is used to separate the outputs from the different test cases it's an arbitrary semi-arbitrary I never bother changing it to be honest it's a horrible string that's unlikely to occur in the output then the student answer which goes in at that point and then I have a main function which has a series of test cases. So this is a language called Twig. You can read up on that if you like, or you can look at the documentation, of course, for CodeRunner. And by the way, the documentation is available on coderunner.org.nz via that link there, current version of the documentation. And it evaluates each test in a separate block and uh, prints the separator between them except for the last test case. So that's what's going on under the hood and you can actually see the result of that if I turn off the customize check button but enable template debugging. I get a warning that if I've already customized the question I'm about to throw it away. That that isn't the case here. I didn't actually customize it. I just showed it to you. If I turn on template debugging and now save and run my question, I actually get to see what really happens when the student runs it. So if I preview that and fill in the correct response, and I obviously should have fewer rows of available. I can do that if I like. If I now check, I get to see what the program is that's being run. So it consists of all the uh, boilerplate code, the student's answer went in here, and then the int main, and then every single test in a separate block. This can be very helpful to you if you don't know what's going on. I said I'd show you both C and C++. Let's back off very quickly and go back and first of all I'm going to show you how to change the size of the answer box, which was too big in that case. A much better number there would have been something like eight lines, because if the student needs more than eight lines, they're in serious strife. Now with that change, if I look at the code again, it's got a much better sized answer box. There it is now, a smaller area for the student to work in. And let's look at the difference between that and a C++ version, which looks like this when I edit it. So essentially the whole process was the same, except that, of course, I have to say write a C++ function, and uh, the answer is the same, but my tests now should be in C++. So C out from the square of minus 11 and so on. So that if I were to turn on customize uh, or template debugging, shall we say, when I run that particular version, which of course compiles and runs with a C++ compiler, not a C compiler, though they're kind of the same. Um, in this case now, when I preview it, I get to see, let's fill in the correct response and check it. Now you can see that the template code includes the C, uh, C++ uh, includes rather than C includes, and it uses namespace STD as well, with the different test code. Right, well, I hope that was suitably instructive. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video if I get around to making another one sometime. Bye.